on this 4th of July, 2019. I want to welcome you to a chill stream. It probably won't be very chill since uh, we can't stop talking about what's happening in EVE Online. With me right now is Exxon Fang, who is from Fuedit, and he's also part of Talking In Stations, but you can consider him the little guy inside this big drifter mess. How's it going, Exxon? How's it going, guys? Good. I'm uh, glad to wake up at 11 a.m. on a uh, day off work on Freedom. <laughs> um, so what we've seen so far in the last week or so is a series of NPC attacks on outlaw space that only players can control. And that has created a lot of, oh, it's generated a lot of talk. Uh, mostly coming from the Imperium that I've noticed inside of our channels. But uh, this is something that had affected everyone that was in outlaw space all around what they call the donut, the outskirts of the map. And uh, those people have been under constant attack. Uh, then it, then it kind of came to a stop for a couple days, and then it started up again on Wednesday, but it started up a bit different. Uh, instead of the structures getting attacked by these uh, drifters, the drifters started attacking uh, anomalies in smaller groups, so they weren't so um, potent, I guess. Uh, and, and that has affected, again, everybody who has large organizations inside of uh, null sec space, as we call it, same as outlaw space, zero, zero. Um, but everybody wondered what was happening with the little guy because some of the justification for calling on CCP to stop these attacks, they weren't fun, they weren't, there wasn't any big gameplay, that it was broken. And these were the criticisms. One of them, one of the criticisms was you're going to kill the little guy who's out there in space. It's not just us that are organized and can defend ourselves against these, but it's the little guy in space that's going to pay for it. So we found one, and that's Exxon. So what, what happened yesterday, or tell us your experience with these things. So week one of Drifters, absolutely nothing. Uh, we have a bunch of low-power citadels and a bunch of citadels in a lot of different systems, and uh, but we didn't see any of them get, get hit. Uh, this week, however, last night, our structures started getting hit. Uh, the first of our structures was in a SOV system we do not own and was wrapped in the span of about 24 minutes going from shield to armor in about 11 to 12 minutes. They wrecked something in the, the system and then appeared to warp to an asteroid belt or warp off um, and not continue to ref other things in that system immediately. Uh, in a system adjacent to the system where my first structure was wrecked, another structure was wrecked. And again, same thing. They would ref one of the structures in the system, then appear to warp off and not ref the other immediately. Uh, this morning I woke up and a third structure was ref. This one was a high power one. Uh, and same thing. It's in the same system as another system that's ref, as another structure that's ref. But it was ref. But this one, it was a uh, citadel, an uh, astro house, that took like an hour and a half for them to ref instead of 20 minutes. Oh, wow. I'm warping around the system right now to see if they're still in system, but there appears to be some sort of cooldown timer or some sort of uh, other behavior that's preventing them from hitting multiple things directly in a row, at least from what I'm seeing from from being a 140-man alliance. So, so they've slowed down, uh, it looks like. Now, if they're toned down, do you think it's a one-day thing because it's a 4th of July holiday and a lot of people are going to be doing family things? Or I think that would be pretty wise if it was, but I really, really doubt that's how it is. But, I mean, from a, from a little guy's perspective, chances are most of your citadels aren't fit right because that's really expensive and takes a lot of logistical strain. So the TLDR is these structures are just going to get roughed, and there's not much we can do about it. I'm not big enough to form a fleet to fight them with a fleet, and most of my structures don't have the proper fit to deal with them. So if they follow up on timers, I'm going to lose all, pretty much all my stuff in Nulsec. If they follow up on timers, and we haven't seen that really happen, I guess, until uh, we got a report here. This is one of the first Citadels. Well, actually, it's not a Citadel. It's... Um... Sinojammer attacked by 
drifters and was actually destroyed by drifters. As far as I know, the only things that have destroyed have been things that just happened to be vulnerable when the drifters started to attack or things that were anchored. Yeah. But considering last week they had the drifter threat as well, it's very possible that something could have been wrecked last week and just now coming into vulnerability. This, week. But it's pretty hard for us to tell if that's coincidence because they just spawn and happen to spawn in that system at that time or if they're actually targeting things they've hit before. Okay, well, here's a citadel. So that was a cyanide jammer. Here's a citadel. Uh, as you can see, when we scroll down, the culprits, <laughs> look at these guys. <laughs> uh, the culprits were drifters. Uh, that is the Artemis Tyrannos. Um, oh, it looks like they're killing a bunch of things besides ships. Uh, you can see in the lower tier here, uh, they took out a dread, took out an astro house. Uh, they took out an industrial or a manufacturing complex, engineering complex. Um, and I think that's one of the large ones, too. Uh, Ed, oh, no, that's this week, the attacks seem much, much more widespread. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of being huge fleets of drifters, it's just three, and only two of them appear to actually be firing at things, but they are everywhere. Now. Mm -hmm. Well, this is um, a... Go ahead. Uh, another thing I noticed is that my structures in pure blind were hit within the span of like 30 minutes of each other. So it seems like they're activating entire regions around the same time. And then I talked to Goon Swarm and they had something in the region that was wrapped within 40 minutes of my structures in pure blind. Right. And we saw a video of you running around trying to defend them um, and trying to watch them. What was their behavior? Uh, interesting. Uh, they would, the two Orions would basically anchor on one of the Orions and fly around and just apply damage to the structure. And that was basically all they did. The Apollo, the battleship, would warp in and out, warp in to between like 90 and 110 kilometers, and then warp out to between 300 and 650 kilometers. And it would do that literally every five seconds. To the point where it was impossible for me to actually lock uh, the battleships with my system. Later on a different structure, though, they it appeared that they were waiting much longer in between those warps to the point where I was actually able to lock the battleship once uh, over the course of the entire ref. After they refed uh, the Citadel, they warped off to a random asteroid belt, sat there, for about 20 to 30 minutes, then warped to another asteroid belt and sat there for 20 to 30 minutes. They, they did that for about two hours before I got bored of watching. And they didn't bother the uh, the other uh, rats, the other NPCs that were there. Correct. There are garistas in the space, and they just kind of hung out with them. I think that's. I can funny. definitely confirm that the attacks are a lot more widespread this time. <laughs> All right, so let's let's go back and put that in perspective. The first group of attacks were hitting who? Last week. I think it was four of our systems or five of our systems uh, that were hit last week, and but there were several several ships, uh, you know, going from structure to structure in those systems, and you know, I've I thought that was a little. I thought that was like more fun. That was more interesting because we didn't have to go all over everywhere. Um, this week, now the, they're much more widespread uh, in several systems uh, to the point where we're kind of fanned out now all over with, you know, uh, carriers and super carriers and whatnot. And kind of, they just kind of pop up, right, in a random system. And then they'll stay in that system until we kill them. And, uh, you know, you kind of rest for a little bit and then they might show up back up in that system or they might show up, you know, um, five jumps away or something that is, it's very random. Yeah, so what used to be isolated attacks on certain systems is now um, less, less potent groups of drifters attacking multiple, multiple systems. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty accurate. and. You know, it is, it's less potent in the sense that there's not as many of them because there's, you know, just groups of three. 
and you know it's the two battle cruisers and the battleship but they can still ref just about everything um i haven't seen them ref a dracus fortizar and you know i haven't seen them ref some of the higher end uh, structures only because with only three what happens is they don't uh, put a sustained amount of damage right so there, there's pauses uh, between the damage so they don't hit the damage cap so that one or two or three seconds between damaging it counts down that repair timer but <laughs> the interesting thing is even as it slowly counts down that repair timer and then it clicks into repair they just continue to to ref it <laughs> then it just starts again so it's like this kind of endless loop wild uh question from the audience are you still having fun with these yeah, so, uh, and let me be very clear uh, <laughs> that I am the eternal optimist. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I can, you know, I was in the Marines for six years. Like, I can, I can put up with a lot. Yeah. So, um, I'm not having, uh, I'm, I'm having fun in the sense that the way that, you know, test has formed and that we've adapted to it and we've gotten fleets and communication channels. I think that's really exciting and, and it's fun. Uh, but they're so widespread. Um, there are a couple of things, you know, that I would love to tweak about them, you know, that if there was some way to predict uh, where they were going to show up or something like that, um, you know, that would be great. And also, I think, you know, one of the big problems right now in the beginning is it puts a lot of wear and tear on our logistics and on our leadership and, and all of these types of things. But, you know, our response to them, uh, you know, has been a lot of fun in that sense. I, I wish it was a little bit more rewarding, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, we found we have found, though, that with the T2 salvages, uh, there is a chance to get some actually really good salvage. I mean, you know, some guy earlier got like 75 mil in salvage from one of the battleships. But you know, they're not dropping blue loot anymore, uh, to my knowledge. So, you know, there, there's a plethora of reasons um, that people don't like them. I think a lot of them are very valid, you know, that it's taking away from PVP and things like that. But, um, you know, for me personally, you know, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it and I'm having fun, um, you know, hanging out with, you know, uh, testes and kind of running around and uh, fighting them is, it's, it's an interesting, and I always like everything new, you know, I like new stuff and I, I like dynamic kind of content. So, you know, I'm, I'm not having as much fun because it's so widespread, but uh, I'm still uh, having fun. All right. Yeah, you can definitely put up with a lot and you're an internal optimist, which I really like. Um, okay, so let's go back then and uh, we know how they're reacting and what they're doing and stuff. And has, has the temperature, has the reaction from players changed over the last week and a half? I mean, I think it's, <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, I think it's like over the top, personally, um, almost laughable. Here's, um, the th here's the thing. Like, it seems like uh, talking in stations become a place where a lot of people talk about this. Some are laughing with it, saying it's great. Other people are saying this is miserable. Why are we, do why are we being subject uh, to this? Uh, but it seems like it's nonstop. Hey, Ashtarathi. Um my question is, I look at Reddit or I look at other places and I don't, I don't see that same fever pitch, you know, is it, what's like, um, other community areas, uh, what's their temperature on this? Anybody I, I think there's, you know, you kind of have to, I think you kind of have to separate, um, the people that have actually been fighting them and uh, defending them and involved in the response and the leadership dealing with, you know, the content notifications and that kind of thing and getting everything fueled, I think, <clears throat> you know, they have their opinions. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say that they're more valid, um, but I will say that, that they're more valid than uh, the people that haven't messed with them. But on the same token, the people that haven't really messed with them they're kind of uh, talking about the idea and, you know, what this means for the game and, and this and that. That's just a, a different set, right? So um, I think 
on both sides, you know, you're going to find like a uniformly negative opinion on them um, because there's no way to predict them and there's no rewards and they're excessive. You know, um, you can say all of those things about them. You know, I, I, for me personally, I just think that as long as <laughs> it's short, you know, maybe if this isn't the last week, maybe it's next week is the last week, uh, or it, there's some sort of story progression or some sort of arc or some something like that. Um, but, you know, all in all, what I've seen is most people uh, dislike them uh, intensely. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we've seen from uh, uh, people who've talked, but I, I, there's been a number of people in channel that are like, I'm enjoying this. I live in low sec. Uh, I don't have a bunch of structures. I'm not subject to the pain. Uh, so it's, and, and this is something that I try to get across. It's, it's not terrible gameplay, period. It's terrible gameplay for a group of people. And there's always another group of people in EVE Online, since it's about 64 games in the same one universe that aren't subject to it. So the seeing other people struggle with something and to, um, interfere with their gameplay is not necessarily a net negative. It is for those people who are subject to it, but people who are not subject to it now have an advantage because they're not dealing with this sort of thing. So in certain senses, people who have groups that have large structural organization are more vulnerable to this than groups that don't have any any struct uh, structure at all, any structures put there in place. And I completely agree with that, yeah. right? Because the other problem is it pulls you away from doing, you know, sort of PVP or sort of big fleet things, you know what I mean? So instead mm -hmm. of us, you know, planning some super huge attack on the pandas, it's like, well, actually we need to <laughs> go 16 jumps and uh, defend this structure and we have to refuel this one and we have to do this one, you know? It would... I think a lot of the issue is the people who are dealing with it are also the content creators and are also the people who do the logistics to create the content. Okay, so, but that's certain content, right? Because a hauler in high sec has nothing to do with FCs, right? Yeah, I mean, we're talking like about different groups of people. Groups that are dealing with this. Again, again, in the confines of the groups that are having to deal with this, it is, it is uh, say, not pleasant, busy, busy work, not rewarding, uh, help me out here. How many other things have people comment about this? Oppressive. Uh, oppressive, yeah. And, and again, but then there's other parts of the population that don't have to deal with this. Now, what's funny to me is there's so many things in reverse here, right? Like we we were joking around when this started as, um, uh, what do they call it when uh, PVPers jump on players that just want to play with the environment? Non-consensual PVP. Thank you. That, thank you. No, non-consensual PVP is what I was looking for. Oh, non-consensual PVP. Non-consensual okay. PVP. And then this is, and, and used to be when non-consensual PVP happened and somebody complained about it, they'd get barraged with like toughen up, figure out uh, how to play the real Eve, et cetera, et cetera. There was a lot of stuff that basically said, suck it up. And now we have non-consensual PVE and the whole a whole different group of people is complaining that, hey, I didn't sign up for this. This is not gameplay. Uh, why is this happening? And, uh, and, and the answer has been, suck it up uh, from, from other people. Well, and so it's funny how that's well, reversed. That, that puzzle has been really interesting because while the outcry is we don't want non-consensual PVE, when you drill down to it, <clears throat> you often get some sort of quote-unquote solution like if only they're rewarding, mm -hmm. or if only we can. <clears throat> sorry, if only we could descan them. Uh -huh. Um, you know, whatever. So like when you get past it, and then you know, they'll even say uh, that, or some will admit that incursions, if they drop on your main systems, is quote unquote non-consensual PVE because you have to take care of them. So I don't necessarily think it's that. That being said, the drifters almost seem engineered to be frustrating. Yeah. Well, here's another one. And this is the parallel I was going for, because that one was like last week, right? That was so last week. But this week it was, um, it's, or not, here's just a different way of looking at it. You know how 
uh, when they say, hey, there's a PvP fleet, stop ratting around, stop doing environmental stuff, stop playing with NPCs, you got to get into this PvP fleet, right? Like, you must, or you'll get kicked out of these groups. And this seems like the reverse of that. Like, no, 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 you can't PvP because you're busy dealing with the environment. So it kind of, there's some interesting like flips that are happening. And I know you may not agree with the non-consensual PVE thing, but I think it's downright hilarious, uh, that, that term. Uh, and I, I don't know, do you think it's a fair comparison? But uh, for, wait, which one? The non-consensual PVE or the, the, the non-consensual stopping PVE. rent? Well, I guess, I guess I, the reason why, um, I think it's become like almost like a tease, yeah, like a jab, more oh. than a literally true statement, right? Because as as I said, um, non consensual PVE was already in the game, as it were. So, but I and it, I mean, there's there's a lot of different ways that that people have turned around the uh, the words of goons or of of, of uh, of null seckers over the years in order to turn it back around on this. And I think that there are some parallels um, because it is the idea that uh, Eve is actually a game that isn't necessarily always about doing exactly what you want to do, but only when you have the ability, the will, the resources, and the power to make that happen. And sometimes you get overwhelmed. And these are all truisms throughout all of Eve, and the fact that it's being done by an AI is causing extra frustration. But I wonder how long it'll take to, till there's some sort of like adaptation. At the same time, with this escalation that we've seen this week, this is nuts. Like I don't even know, I don't know what to say about this stuff, man. Like you guys made CCP mad or something. You think it's punishment? I. Well, I actually, I, I suspect that if there is a solution coming, it would come soon. I, I imagine that, um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's punishment or just like a message that, hey, by the way, uh, when we pulled it back, the bug that we pulled it back for was that it wasn't destroying you hard enough. You know, like, I, I, I don't even know what to say at this point. It's just so, like, the, the, the damage that was done yesterday and it's ongoing right like it hasn't even slowed down right mm -hmm. on fourth of well, july it, yeah it took a couple no it did slow down i believe but was that right exxon or does it seem like it slowed down uh i haven't had anything hit today okay i am currently warping from celestial to celestial from anom to anom from asteroid to asteroid trying to find them because i can't they can't be descanned they can't be probed but ron did <laughs> spent the last 30 minutes doing that ron just had to take off to go deal with them so they are attacking i just don't know oh. where they are uh i mean uh what frequency they're attacking we thought they had maybe slowed down for the holiday or something and somebody i think it was noisy gamer said they had slowed down for canada day and i don't know if he's joking or not but um so maybe they maybe they tune them down a little bit uh as people are away from the game spending holiday time with family we we can't confirm. Dunk Dinkle, Either who's that or just less people die because there's not as many people out ratting or something. Let's have a look at that actually. Um, so far, it looks like one structure has died. I'll go through these. Killing a lot of players and ships, and even T two ships. Uh, looks like VNIs are well, dying. Well, a uh, an uh, Asterhus and a um. Uh, a Athenor was mm -hmm. killed yesterday. Yeah, I saw that. those are both opportunistic. Like, like some people are celebrating this as like this the the AI worked. Well, actually, it just if anything, it got lucky this time. So we'll have to see, right? What what happens over? Actually, over yeah, this Athenor. We'll look at it. This is two structures. <clears throat> so with everything that's happened, two structures have been destroyed. Uh, keep that in mind. Um, and it looks like there are some players on this kill as well, including the final blow going to uh, uh, someone f um, from a corporation or an alliance. So the yeah, so... Drifters did most of the uh, damage, the, but didn't kill it. I think it was the uh, Athenor 
if you look on the kill boards, there's also an Astrahus that was killed by Slice with one uh, one of the members that was on the kill from the Athenor also on the kill with Slice. Oh. So I don't know if this was opportunism mm -hmm. or if the Drifters showed up to help, uh, but it well, does seem like it was part of a larger effort. Drifters did a lot of the damage, but uh, again, the final blow, not the Drifters. The final blow comes to um, actual players. Right, but if you click on the system, you'll see that there's an Astrohus that died right around that same time in that same system. A different one. So you think they were in yes. the area. Yeah. Well, again, like that was Slice, though. So, but it, except for one member from that other group. So I'm not sure how it all went down, but it seemed like they were one group, or the Slice was bashing the Astrohus when the Drifter started attacking the other guy or the other one. And then either those, that small team, it has to have been opportunism. Why would you stay on grid? That's what, I, that's what blows my mind. <laughs> All right. So, um, Exxon, so you're, you're jumping around. Uh, do they seem active or nothing's been attacked for you, right? Uh, nothing's been attacked for the last eight hours in the system. Yeah, and you can't actually see them until they hit you. And when they hit you, it's usually deadly, right? Correct. It, usually I can't get out there in time to actually do anything about it. I mean, mind you, my citadels aren't fit, so it's not like I could do anything for them anyways. But yeah. the first structures that I had that got hit were like 30 or 40 jumps away, and there's just no way I was getting there in time. How fast do they... The other really confusing yeah. thing about that Athenor kill is that it is empty. Yeah. So, you know, if you're not looking at the amount of burnout it's creating in players, if you're just looking at the amount of damage they've done, it's not very good, right? For the invasion, for the size of the invasion. Didn't they become like in the top 10 of all time now? It's, well, I'm sorry, as far as ship kills? Possibly. Well, then what, what, what's your metric then? A metric was actual uh, infrastructure damage. Well, it's been a day. No, it hasn't. Is this just one day or is this... Uh... Yeah, this is... It, it restarted yesterday. And what about last week? I think they killed a Well, last week was things. broken. The only thing it killed was an Ancelibus uh, jump gate, and that was already uh, in low power. Well, I'm confused. Since the, the final blow came from player characters... Mm -hmm. Have we so seen that, drifters finish anything off? So I believe that that is the nature of NPCs. So if an NPC finishes a kill, that kill is awarded to the last player to have done damage as the final blow. So that Athenor uh, was actually anchoring. That's what I thought. Who anchors so that's a why it's not freaking there. Athenor in the middle of the... I don't even know. Yeah. This is Plex in the cargo hold level situations. So on the other side of this, the, the reason that we're not seeing the drifters destroy a lot of structures is that it takes a decent amount of time to kill a lot of these structures. Um, some of them have a window a week uh, for their next vulnerability timer. So for instance, if something was shot at when this initially launched a week ago, it might be just now coming into its uh, first reinforcement timer. Uh, some statistics from tests, they have 176 systems that have been attacked, uh, over 400 attacks from these drifters. That's a good array. Yeah, the fact that the attacks moved um, ruined some of my theories. <laughs> That's right, you're trying to figure out what's going on, right? Yeah. Or the, the consortium that does a lot of um, basically... Um, um, I don't know, analyzing of lore or backstory for EVE Online. What, what do they think of this? Because they must be looking at it too. Uh, from my, I mean, like, Arataka is currently just, well, first of all, still trying to figure out invasions a lot, like the high sec version, mm -hmm. um, but are intensely interested in uh, what's going on with Nullsec. I know that uh, they were talking about reaching out to major empires and looking into getting like blue status so that way they can go out there and experiment um, themselves to figure out what's going on. Um, overall, uh, 
the other thing is is that they we are or they they are more at this point they're we're they're picking through like the text of a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and this like all the pieces of the story in order to try to figure out what might be the thing that happens next right mm -hmm. One uh, criticism is that CCP hasn't really relayed any information about what's going on. And so that's why I ask what they're looking at, because lore isn't something that CCP just puts out, right? The company just says this happened. Um, lately, they've been giving you a lot of clues to things, and players have been assembling the clues and putting it together. So that's why I asked what their point of view was, since they're kind of the Sherlock Holmes of that sort of in, uh, content. Yeah, um, you're absolutely right that CCP is playing this extraordinarily close to the chest, which a lot of people find exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if they explained to us how it works or provided a basic you know, reward system, then it would be a very different thing happening, all right? Like, the you would not see the reactions that you do now if there wasn't that giant unknown and the amount of story as it were that's being generated by this is actually pretty incredible um even the even the burn high sex stuff like this is the thing like i'm intensely interested in how this is going to play out in to in total because, um, you know, this is a level of emergent gameplay, potentially, than we've seen in a long time. And, you know, with everybody complaining that things are so stagnant, going into a summer that usually has some pretty big doldrums, uh, I think it's really awesome that you can be talking about what's going on in EVE for like two days straight and not run out of things to talk about. Something to correct. Um, the final blow goes to players that put damage on a structure, even if they're not the final blow, if their only other competitor for that position is an NPC. So NPCs can't get the final blow, is what I'm trying uh, understanding here from Zeronic. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So mm -hmm. like... Um, Sorry, I when missed I was, it when you said it. <laughs> yeah, so my coercer, right? Yeah. So I was in high sec. My coercer, I, I warped to a belt. There's an Omen Navy issue smart bombing. I go up through the Omen Navy issue. He invokes Concord. So as soon as Concord shows up, I shoot uh, the Omen. Concord blows him up. I get killing blow and, and uh, kill mail. Right. Wow. It's a kill report now. Hasn't been a mail in 10 years. 20 years, 15 years. All right. So, That's fair. no, but everybody knows it is kill mail. I'm joking. It's just, uh, oh, what used to happen in EVE Online, for those who don't know, when you used to kill somebody, you used to get a, na a mail in game. It would be an email, basically, in game that says, yeah, you've got them. And so everybody called uh, confirmation of kill the kill mail. Uh, but CCP later changed that mail system to um, an actual, like, list that you can look up on your on your in your uh, ui so it became part of a kill list and uh, or a, a kill alert but everybody calls it kill mail it's just funny you know the origin of things you, you, you're just pedantically correcting me in particular i know yeah I know. <laughs> no no you know what it's a good opportunity to, to give a little bit of eve history yeah. uh okay so now something interesting we'll shift gears here a second um Something interesting happened earlier, right? We had a lot of people this week. What's it been like? And you've been a big part of it, but what's it been like in talking in stations, public chat, like uh, the actual voice, the audio comms? I've actually found it largely constructive. Um, there have been a couple points in which uh, there have been some pretty heated debates. One of the interesting things about what's happening is that it's spurring a lot of secondary discussions about, you know, the power between high sec and null sec. What is the real pub, uh, distribution of players in the Eve? What should CCP, you know, be focusing on? 
who, you know, what, what is Eve? You know, like these questions get asked when suddenly NPCs go and make all of the PVPers PVE, right? Like it, it, it's flipped up on its, on its head. And so it's causing a lot of, um, a lot of really interesting discussions among really smart people. So it's been fascinating as far as I'm concerned. All right. Tell us about um, a few days ago. Uh, people were saying like, "Oh, they're complaining in this voice channel." And they were writing that in public. I'm talking about some members that are well known to us and friends. But they were saying like, "Oh no, there goes Ashtaroth, or there goes Matter, or whatever." They were saying stuff, and that attracted uh, somebody who's been around quite a bit. Who's usually not uh, the Matani, and it attracted their head diplomat Marana, and it attracted. Um, some members of the Imperium who are being very vocal about this on talking station. So they came into the channel and what happened after that? Well, uh, right, actually right before that was one of the points that was all, kind of getting to the point where it was more heated. I was sort of getting nervous that we might have to wind it back a bit. And then the Mitanni comes in and starts talking. And for some reason that function is a, as a focusing moment. Um, and people kind of calmed down, and it was a really good talk about um, the mechanics of Nullsec, the resources that it takes to do a war, why one would find it unreasonable to uh, defend against drifters and be at some deployed war, um, and even stuff about the burning high sec and, and uh, how that plans on playing out in spite of the fact that there's drifter well at the time as in spite of the fact that the drifters had stopped attacking yeah and it was it was different though because it was uh you never really know uh matani being the leader of the biggest organization probably the most powerful organization right now in eve online the imperium you never really know if you're going to get a, a talk to a player or talk to a leader of the biggest group that has a political point of view. But several times he said real talk, so he was speaking more as a player. Would you agree? Well, I mean... As much as I, that can I, happen. <laughs> I would like to, but I feel like something like real talk can be used as a tick to try to not be in that mode. So like, it doesn't mean anything to me, personally. Yeah. Not, not anything about uh, the Matani. I'm just talking to people before. I've heard that phrase used mm -hmm. um, when it's not real talk too often. But mm -hmm. what I found really fascinating was his candid discussion about the nature of Goon Swarm and the transition from Darius Johnson's Goon Swarm to his Goon Swarm. And uh, so, like, one of the things that he brought up was that he's actually kind of frustrated that people are misquoting him as being the one that said, we're not here to ruin the game, we're here to ruin your game. Because that was, I guess, Darius Johnson, where his expression is best of friends, worst of enemies, which does fit the Mitanni much more. So, um, it, fits the it was actions. interesting. He, say again? Fits the, the actions, track record, etc. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and I've also heard him hear, say it a lot. So, um, But it was interesting to hear about like how basically the core structure of Goon Swarm kind of collapsed. And from that, the Mitanni rebuilt this new one with this kind of new philosophy and Mitanni being more of an, uh, a builder than I guess Barry, Darius Johnson's burner. Uh, we got uh, an empire that rose from that. And so the transition to the Imperium uh, makes a lot more sense to me now. Hmm. Right. So uh, went on answering questions about. Um, I asked him, "Why are you going to attack uh, null sex and or high sec? Uh, you know, is it a, to send a message or is it to get rich?" Um, and he said yes. And then he wouldn't. He wouldn't say which one it was. Um, no, I mean, that's both. both. Yeah, oh yeah, it's both. Yeah, or both. Um, 
But we, we had seen, as you saw in the last show, we had a video of the Meta Show on May 5th, and you could see there, Ethwood's kind of saying, like, hey, this is what we should do. You know, NullSec should get together, and they should embargo HiSec and uh, basically manipulate the market, but also attack their structures, so you have pressure on both ends, and basically get rich uh, and, and, and inflict NullSec on... High sec. It seems punitive, uh, and this seemed to be like fitting that opportunity. Now, uh, Matani denied that the plan was hatched two months ago; that it was something that you know they were talking about, or just one aspect of the many things that they were thinking of doing, or whatever. But uh, he said there was no connection between those two. To be fair to him, yeah, there's there's been a little bit of of goons being goons here, like. I've seen or I've heard so much conflicting information, right? So uh, the Matani um, talking about or and Marana talking about how many gunners they have and and this narrative that um, the gunners like are the same people as the content creators. We've heard this argument over and over and over again. And then last night or yesterday when I was talking to a different goon swarm high up whose name or who I don't remember who it was. Was it um, Dirk Statil or something? He's an FC. He's was, been doing a lot of gunning. It, it, I think it was a supply guy, I thought. Oh, One uh, of the, t- the Tuzzy? Tuzzy maybe? Yeah, yeah, I think it was Tuzzy. Okay. Either way, um, I don't want to misquote, though. So, But when I said that as like part of the discussion, he's like, I don't know why everybody's saying that. You know, We have, we have, a, we have over 100 gunners. It's not that big of a deal. Like we've got gunners all over the place, and so like it's hard to piece together what's really going on because um, these guys are well known for manipulating the narrative and showcasing a different side of things, or or even outright lying if they need to to portray things the way they want it to be portrayed. And this was even something that Mitani was even talking about, like you know when you're or looking weak, or uh, whether or not, or cha- affecting how people uh, think or or interpret the situation, or, or uh, like think highly or think lowly of the person. Shit, uh, appear weak. I don't know how to how to put it better than that. Like, a, a, mm-hmm. like p- he says that people think that we are incompetent or unruly, and uh, that that is useful to him. Yeah. So that being said, all of this stuff about the, the problem is, is that we're getting these conflicting reports about whether or not drifters are doomsday, whether or not drifters drop good loot, whether or not, you know, uh, whether or not they have enough gunners, whether or not they really needed to stop the war. Right. Like the narrative shifts depending on what you're looking at. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to welcome Sinister 1991 to Eve Online. He's brand new, I guess, but uh, and doesn't understand what we're talking about, but he is excited to be here, it looks like. It's all so much, so interesting. Welcome. Uh, we'll, we'll try to sometimes break down concepts for players that are relatively new, but it is a show uh, pretty much for advanced people um, who have played the game a long time and already know a lot of the language and understand the concepts that uh, we're talking about. Well, right now we we are li- literally at like the tip of the spear, right? Like, yeah. I'd love to be able to break this stuff down, but yeah. I don't know enough right. to do. So- like, I, at this point, it would just be story time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, we can get it. Are, Go ahead. There's a lot of figuring out the information and hearing different reports from different alliances and trying to aggregate that all together and what is actually happening. And I think the fact that the stuff is changing so often really does not help in people understanding what's going on. All right, so let's go back to what's going on. I've brought in an FC uh, from NC, but also Providence and former Goon Swarm FC, Redline, the 13th. Did I say it right this time? Close enough. All right, welcome. Let me turn you up. Have you been dealing with the, uh, the Drifter Menace? Um, I only dealt with it one time. And it really seemed kind of pointless to deal with. 
So I'm really just curious, like, uh, why why is it such a big deal to deal with it, you know, now if they don't follow up on timers? Why are people talking about how, like, super inconvenient it is and everything like that when you literally can just ignore it unless they come back? Am, am I confused on something there? That's, that's what I'm curious about. So I asked them... Who's them? Who's them? Uh, various nullsec leadership. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just let them hit you at night and then all of your reinforcements are going to be at, you know, whatever your reinforcement timer is, and then you just guard during that time, right? And the response that I kept getting was basically, what if the gunner falls asleep, you know, what if, what if, what if, what if? And the the fear that I, I'm hearing is I don't like the idea of just being exposed to an armor timer and what all of that could entail. So I would rather stay up all night and stop the drifters from even getting to that point because even getting to the armor timer represents a threat that they don't want, even if it's not the drifters that come back. So more or less, it's a preventative measure, basically. They they feel like they have to go out there and, and defend everything right then and there and drop whatever they're doing. That's gotten, well, yeah, that's gotten, that's my understanding because basically the idea is is that if you let it go to the armor timer and then for something goes wrong at all, any, at any point, boom, you're in structure, right? Like... But well, then again, I think that they, I, I think that they have not decided that they're not coming back, if that makes sense. Like they're prepared, they they seem convinced that they will. Well, I mean, we've seen we've seen ton we've seen multiple regions where there were structures reinforced where they didn't come back. And, was that last week? Um, that was well, yeah, it was last week. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this week, what we're looking at basically, you know, they're warping to anomalies now. Um, but I mean, realistically, if they if they do come back, how how hard is it to deal with them then? Like, do you really have to put everything on hold and you know scream very loudly that everything is terrible just because of this? I I do see it as an opportunity for an organization to demonstrate that they can walk and chew gum at the same time and take advantage of other groups that are having more of a problem. Um, in fact, we were actually even discussing potential counterplay where you know where the drifters are attacking in your enemy system or in your enemy's systems, and then you bubble camp all the way around it so that way uh, they can't respond as appropriately to the drifters inside. There was evidence here, I have it on screen, of a Sino beacon that was destroyed purely by drifters. Uh, so they, I guess they came back and destroyed it, or maybe they shot too hard. Who knows? But I also believe that, and I don't know, this one looked like it, I was, think it was... I think it was low power. Was it low power? Yeah, that's yeah. the thing about the, the flex structures. If they're low power, they, they'll just die. Yep. Okay. So it died right away. No timer on that thing. And that's what I was going to say. There's a caveat. I think I've heard of other structures... Some of those flex structures, I think they're smaller structures, were destroyed. But uh, from what I've heard, most of them, if not all, were low power. And it just seems like the amount of damage they've done has really been to ships trying to interfere with drifters' plans. But that the drifters themselves haven't really destroyed that much stuff. I think that's a fact. Now, you can say that players Correct. are preventing They have not it. destroyed very much infrastructure yet. Although, one of the amusing things about the vulnerability of Nullsex infrastructure is that, from my understanding, if a Encilibix junk bait gate gets reinforced, it stops working. Yeah. So, these null blocks having their nut jump, jump, bridge, jump bridge network just randomly being shut off all throughout their area is probably closer to the real reason why they're having difficulty deploying. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, see if I can get someone in here. 
that is having problems to answer questions. But I want to I want to keep this like cool and collected. It's a discussion. If I feel like it's getting aggro, I'm gonna I'm gonna boot people. Um, what I want to know is what if any of the so-called reported bugs from last week remain now. All right, so we have uh, Dunk Dinkle here. So works logistics for Brave, uh, which is part of Legacy Coalition. So he's in charge of putting down structures, making sure they're all right. How's it going, Dunk? He's also a CSM member. It's also my it's, personal hero. It's also been uh, a long uh, 24 hours or whatever it's been since this all started up again. Well, Congratulations, Dunk, don't you, on CSM. You're welcome. Yeah, tell us... Uh, <laughs> Tell us um, your experience on this, starting from like last week and how it's different this week. So last week, uh, Brave really wasn't affected, so I wasn't able to see firsthand exactly what this looked like, but I had been in communication with other people via CSM and via other like the null people dealing with this. And I was a little bit of the wait and see what happens. It seemed to taper off. There was a two-day period where there were no attacks at all. And everyone was waiting for Tuesday or Wednesday to see what would happen next. And uh, what started up on Wednesday morning for me around 5 a.m. is we started to see the drifter attacks. And it was a different setup than the previous drifter attacks. And basically, it has been continuously with no stop uh, since then. So um, basically, they're hitting all different structures. They stay in a system. And... They'll go after a structure, and then if they reinforce it, they'll just move on to the next structure until they're stopped. If you do kill them, uh, you might get a break of where that particular system isn't hit again, but we have seen systems in which we've stopped them, they respawn in that system. So the idea that the drifters aren't going to come back for timers, we've seen them come back multiple times within the same 24-hour period where they roam the system and reinforce things. So the idea that we can kind of just they won't come back for the timers. We don't need to worry. I don't feel that's a realistic thing. You don't feel or you haven't seen that that's a realistic thing? Well, they have, would, the, the, I, the experience is that they have come back to systems that we have stopped them in repeatedly in the last 24 hours. So based on that experience in the last day and a half, let's say, the idea that they won't be in those same systems when reinforced timers come out is, uh, is uh, I think, a low probability. And so we have to plan to be able to defend everything. And when you get upwards of 20 to 30 reinforcement timers going on, it's difficult to be in all the places. Um, people can pretend these are easy to kill, but they're not easy to kill. A carrier will have trouble with them without assist. Um, the, if an armed structure is there, it can probably defend itself if it's set up for anti-cap. But most Fortizars, or uh, if it's set up for anti-subcap, but most Fortizars are set up for anti-capital, and those weapons are ineffective. It eats structure fighters for lunch. It's a tough enemy to fight, so you have to commit resources to do this. And when you're spread thin, what happens is people are not breaking the blue donut. They're not engaging with their neighbors. And so what you're doing is reducing conflict. And I know people think this is going to break up Null and break up the Blue Donut. And I'm telling you, it is reinforcing the idea that NullSec people will work together and not attack each other while this is going on, which seems to be the opposite of what a lot of people want. So are See, you... Go ahead, Ash. I was going to say that um, I always saw this as like attempting to unify... Nullsec against a common enemy. It just yeah. Hi, you know, that enemy. That enemy <laughs> is not the drifters right now. Uh, right, right, right. That's that that's enemy. Where... That enemy right now is CCP in the minds of most of the leaders. Yeah. Okay. And that's where things have gone kind of sideways. And, and, and well, uh, here's the question I have that's unanswered: is um, what is the goal of this game design change? What is the intent of doing this? And we haven't seen anything like that yet. There's been no communication about it in game, out of game, lore wise about the drifters and what's going on. Um, but what it is doing effectively is the opposite of breaking up the blue donut, which is what a lot of people on all the different forms we discuss want. They want conflict and reduce stagnation. And what's effectively done is shut down wars, make everyone work together and basically stop conflict. I don't necessarily see a problem with that. 
at least for a temporary amount of time. Uh, why now to, to what effect, like what, what would you see as the positive effect other than you're increasing, look, Gobbins and Mitani are in the same chat channel now discussing things together that had never happened before. And mm -hmm. now they're palling it up. Right. So what you're getting, is I think they're both working want, to, they're, is, they're, they're both working to their ends though. I can see what Gobbins is in there doing it. It's obvious to me. I can see even why the North is in there talking. That's obvious to me too. And I can see why uh, the Matani's in there too talking. It's it's obvious to me they're all working towards their own independent benefit, not not necessarily for. Uh, I don't I don't know if that's true right now. I, I think what you're what I'm well, seeing. You can directly, work in multiple. Go ahead. What what I'm seeing directly is a cessation of hostilities between groups, agreements to work together, agreements to share information, and a consolidation of the strength of the NullSec entities in which there's an urge to lash out against whoever they can, right? Rightly or wrongly, that's the urge. Right. They can't lash out directly. They can't lash out directly at CCP, so they're going to lash out at somebody at some point. And so if this is the design goal, is to reinforce the null people feeling different as, a, as opposed to the rest of the EVE community, well, then that's one goal, and I, they're probably achieving it. If their goal is something else, it's unclear to me what that goal is. Rightly or wrongly, where do you fall on that? I mean, a, a, a basically, a outlaw space, null sec attack on high sec in whatever form it takes, whether it's just market manipulations to devastate the market and make it hard for people to buy things they need, or attacks or both. Where do you fall on that, sending a message to CCP, as far as the, that being the goal? Um. I don't know. I'm I'm in the middle on it, right? I see some some benefit of there being impact in other parts of the game. I don't feel it's the most effective method to get the point across. Um, personally, I'm completely underwater in trying to deal with the immediacy of the logistical requirements of dealing with the drifters. So I'm not focused on that right now. In my roles as CSM, this has all occurred in the transition period in which the new CSM is not fully uh, engaged with the communication channels with the rest of CCP. So we're a little out of the loop right now. Um, and so it just is all happening at this time when you don't have the older CSM fully engaged, as you see with Yintan, and then you see the new CSM not really on board. And then there's things that the recurring CSM people can't talk about with the new CSM people. So we're in this very strange state in which normal conduits of communication aren't operating this way because of when we are in time. You would think they'd make a, have a faster transition plan than weeks. Uh, you know, like it would be one day to the next, but I guess there's paperwork to fill out and servers to get in on and that sort of stuff. Did you see that, um, a drifter killed an ESS? Um, explain what an ESS is and why that's important. Well, so in NullSec, they have the option to drop a special structure in their system called the Encounter Surveillance System that takes a portion, a cut out of their tax, uh, their ratting income, but then generates more value in the form of tokens that can be turned in. But this thing can be smashed like a a penny bet or you know like a bank or something like that mm. by uh, an enemy force who could come in break it steal your money and leave if you haven't pulled it out recently as a as a organization or as a you know alliance or whatever so the fact that a drifter would kill these things i don't think they don't have reinforcement timers and since drifters can't be descanned like you're probably, if you wanted to prevent this from happening, you literally have to have somebody on grid sitting there waiting because you're not going to get a, a notification either. So it's that's pretty, that's pretty mean right there. So, um, so Dunk is somebody who's dealing with it as part of a large organization and, and saying he doesn't see the value in this gameplay. Redline, you're questioning what the problem is. Uh, what's going on in Providence? You're associated with with Providence to no, you're associated with MPSI, but you guys are in Providence. Have you seen anything going on down there? Uh, I haven't been down there in, in a while. It's been a few weeks, um, right? Yeah. yeah, it's it's a little bit of a lull zone. 
Um, the only real interaction that I've seen is uh, up in Horde space with drifters. Um, and I saw them handle them pretty capably with just a bunch of corms. So I really, I guess I, that's kind of where my question was coming from. Uh, and, and Dunk pretty much answered it. You guys answered it pretty well as far as uh, why you want to nip it in the bud, so to speak. Um, but I guess my my follow-up would be, uh, you know, is it is it still possible to be deployed somewhere and, and deal with that back at home? Or is it completely impossible now? Has this completely changed the way that uh, NullSec works for you guys? It's not completely impossible. Uh, last night we had several SOV timers up in Scalding Pass and a fleet had to go up there to deal with uh, timers. So that's us engaging in something other than fighting with the drifters. While that happened, we had multiple structures get reinforced because we couldn't really split our forces. And so we had to make a decision about what to do. So it, you can, in theory, still do it, but there is a cost. And um, like everything in EVE, you have to risk versus what's the reward. And so it, it is possible, but it cost us multiple things getting reinforced. Um, and you know that it's possible, but again, it's worth. This is all is worth it if it's going to achieve something that is positive for the game. Right now, I am tr having personal trouble seeing what the positive outcome of this event is going to be, other than Schadenfreude in social media. Okay, let me let me try to put a, a positive uh, in front of you. If this is a burden that only Outlaw Space Nullsec has to deal with. Does it become a pressure to become, to make it harder, to be less less big or to have less space? I think it has the opposite effect. I, I think it, it, it uh, some have talked about, it makes us be even more fortress-like to even more hyper-vigilant and aware of protecting our space, to invest even more resources in strengthening uh, all of our abilities to repel attack. So the, the idea that we would give up regions or give up space or give up citadels because the NPCs are attacking us, no one has discussed that. It's not even on hey, the table so in, any, in any news. group. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Ash. Arataka Research Consortium structures are being re have been reinforced by Sanchez Nation forces. Ah, oh, here it is. Over the last two days. These are the uh, Aritaka's research consortium structures that are surrounded around um, doing the Triglavian um, semiosis console research in Semiki. These are the same structures that were, that were reinforced by drifters um, over the last few months. Sorry, Dunk, we'll come back to it, but explain Ashtarathi why that's important. Well, uh, so far, Arata well, for two reasons. One, mm -hmm. ARC is the people that CCB have basically experimented most of this on, because as we mentioned earlier, ARC is basically the most invested player organization in interacting with the lore, in particular these drifter things. So, like, they have had all kinds of different lore events happen over the last, like, year or two. Uh, so they, their structures have been reinforced a few times by drifters. We assume that these were uh, one of the test runs for what we're seeing now live. So the fact that we now see Sancha forces doing that is a progress in, progression in the story because we know that Sancha's nation is involved in all of this because the drifters or not the drifters, the Triglavians are very mad at them, and we don't really know why. Uh, well, we we have some ideas. Hold on, but before you get into what their motivations are and all that kind of stuff, for people that aren't that familiar with the game, they're basically now that signals a third NPC faction uh, involved in raids or in these uh, invasions. Right, this is the invasion expansion, right. and it started out with one group. It's now gone to a second group, and this is the beginning of a third group. The third group. The last group. Yeah. So Triglavians. In their videos, refer to um, the drifters, the road drones, the Sancha, and us. Uh, and the road drones, they're they're not like a main player; they're more like a pawn being used by the different sides to to do things. So the main players are the drifters, the Triglavians, and the Sancha. Now we've known that, but obviously we haven't seen any Sancha in the abyss, and it's been kind of this weird thing that Sancha 
is involved, but we haven't seen any impact of that involvement yet until the 2nd of July. So what, this plays into the idea that you had, which was that we're going to be basically, uh, we're going to see these three groups fight all around us all the time and fight us and themselves, right? Like there's going to be a three-way, four-way fight. Well, I believe that the tech is eventually going to be just for general actions of one empire against another empire, pirates, empires, etc. But yes, uh, right now it seems like there are three organizations that have their own goals and they're acting upon them. And we are almost collateral in this. We're collateral damage? <laughs> yeah, we're the collateral in this uh, conflict uh, almost. Uh, okay. Well, that sounds, that sounds like a story progression. It looks like some players don't care about story progression. They're mad because they can't fight each other. This is a classic, to me, this is a classic matchup. Is the game moving along as a virtual world with storyline, or is this just a simulator to beat each other up? And those seems to be like the competing problems because in actual fact, not a lot of damage has been done to Nullsec by drifters. It's, in fact, in the grand scheme of things, it's superficial. What has happened is they've been taxed because they're frightened of losing those things, so they're protecting them preemptively uh, and saying that they can't do much besides that. But in, this, in a, a two- or three-week period of this expansion called Invasions, right, that we're in, when we see that the game is progressing in a, in a storyline way, no, it's not being told to us uh, by CCP. That doesn't mean it's the storyline isn't progressing though. So I think it's a very interesting dynamic between the company who's saying we're moving this game uh, story, that we're moving the storyline forward, this virtual universe. And the people saying like, we're going to make this whole place suffer and we're going to make CCP suffer because we're not able to play the game that we want to play. I see a disconnect. Do you? Maybe I overspoke it. Well, it's just different people with different goals. Yeah. Um, I think that... But it, I think... But, you know, it's different people with different goals, but there is a claim of ownership. There's a lot of, like, this is what Eve is... Why would you mess with that? Wouldn't you say? I think it's well, fair yeah. to say. I, I would say that, but that's what I was talking about earlier. Is that like these are the these are the debates of the ages, right? But they always kind of brew up in some forum post where somebody decries that Eve is only about PvP, and then maybe somebody argues about that or whatever. But now that this is happening, and like it's kind of escalated that argument to being pretty important because. Uh, I guess if your if your mentality is that Eve should be all about supporting the PvP and that everything else should basically get out of the way for it, uh, this seems to be quite a violation to your uh, viewpoint of how Eve should work. Yeah, I but isn't there true. a middle? Isn't there a middle ground here? Oh, I, yeah, mean, I think there is. I mean, I mean well, I, you know, I, I enjoy the lore, and I'm a, a PvP person, and I enjoy the lore. I've included the lore in different things I've done. Mm -hmm. And there is a middle ground between uh, a drifter attack that helps tell a story, the way that Eritaka Research has been attacked in a one-time or two-time event, um, as opposed to what is happening now with the drifters, in which it has been a continuous, unexplained, no lore-driven kind of thing. There's a middle ground. And I don't think anyone would be upset if there was a, an attack and we knew and, and then it, it wasn't literally 24 hours a day. There's a middle ground between those doing nothing and what we're seeing today. Actually, in the last I hour, strongly... they have uh, reported that the attacks have stopped in the last hour. Go ahead, Ash. I, I, I strongly agree with what you're saying there. I will, I will caution you that, that, the the fact that the drifters are not communicating with us what their motivations are and that this is all very unknown and 24/7 are all very consistent with the with the quote unquote lore of the drifters just so you know um i, I don't i don't disagree with that but there's other ways in which that could be communicated there's no scope of this is how the uh, is responding there's nothing there's nothing compared to what we have gotten with months of prep work 
with the Triglavians and what's going on with the Sanchez and the Ark people. We've heard nothing, which is a very different approach as far as lore wise. Forget about whether drifters talk to us. Like, what's the conquered response? What's the DED response? What is all of that? There's been nothing. Actually, the DED did offer, uh, Concord did offer a formal response uh, to the Capsuleers uh, when they requested for help. Which was basically pirate scums can go deal with themselves. We're dealing with the Triglavians. Uh, I didn't know but that. That being said, <laughs> uh, I all that said, I I agree with you. Like this is bonkers, and that like there this is completely unsustainable. It be for no other reason because like okay, let's say CCP implements this, and they're just, like they release a dev blog, and they're like, congratulations, this is your new universe. We're just gonna attack you with drifters from now on enjoy then what that would mean is what would that mean for the meta what that would mean is is that only supers and titans can rat do you want that i don't want that ccp doesn't want that so that alone tells me that this can't be the permanent life of null it seems to be changing too right i mean what happened last week is different uh maybe the same net result but uh this week the drifters have gone after uh, not just structures, but people in systems. Like they've actually gone after anomalies, for instance, where people rat. And I don't know, where did you get that you can still rat in a super or a... Because, um, uh, well, I mean, you're right. This is only r reports, but I've heard that... Su and I've seen like a super fighter die, but that's it. A super so, what? So like a, their fighters, one of their fighters will show up on the kill board by, by a Toronto's, but mm -hmm. then they'll be... Like the, there's no super kill. Uh, so I've heard, heard, I've heard that, that I've heard that the drifters did take out uh, a titan. Like I've I've heard that. Don't well, know they took true. out a hell in the first pack, but this new pack is actually the one that's just one drifter or one battleship with two uh, cruisers. Mm -hmm. I've heard lots of different configurations of people uh, s succeed against it. So I think that I the the idea the expectation would be that a super could defend itself against a drifter, but Anything lo lower than that almost certainly cannot. I, I think that's a far cry from it's safe to use super carriers to do NPC ratting. That's fair. Well, in that yeah. case, it's not safe to do NPC ratting. Nobody should rat. That'd be good. Like, no, that isn't going to work either. Oh, no, no. I see what you're saying. I mean, your point remains this has to be temporary because you can't shut down ratting for all of null sec. Or can you? I, who the heck knows? I don't really know. I, you can I don't think you can because ADMs are tied to that. So mm. like as this yeah. goes on, everybody's empire is going to like start to dwindle Decay. if they're not rat out there ratting. Right. You're not maintaining it. Yep. Uh, right. Because for people that don't know that you have these things that are called infrastructure hubs and in order to, and they regulate your defensiveness of your system. In other words, to take over your system, it takes longer if your iHub is stronger and your iHub only gets stronger with a number of different criteria being met. One is the amount of mining that's done in the system. Two is the amount of activity ratting, we call it, where you're destroying NPCs. And the third one, what is the third one? The combat one. Which it's literally is, time. Or time. Okay, thanks. The combat one was the NPCs. But the point is that you're, the security of your empire will decay if your people aren't out there mining shooting things and and uh having time tick away while they do that so all defenses uh, around nullsec if everybody's oppressed and can't do their ratting or mining all the defenses actually come down slowly right and what that basically means is that their vulnerability window on their structures all widen so that way they're they they have less control over when the structures come out of reinforce. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's any other like immediate effects. I know that I mean as ADMs drop, as well as ADMs climb, you can put in upgrades. That's how you make null sec systems as good as they are, where you can like constantly spawn havens and have giant rocks of spud main, right? Like that comes from having these high ADMs. So not only is it like a security issue, but also very swiftly, those high end sites are going to stop spawning. And so even when this is over, they're going to have to grind it back up to get, be able to use them again. 
So Exxon, we're like looking at this and saying, oh, these big empires, they're in trouble, right? They, they own regions at a time. But you're the little guy in this. Um, you've got a couple little systems that you uh, are trying to get into in space and that sort of thing. And, and it's not been a great experience for you, right? No, I mean, there's not really much I can do against them, to be honest with you. It's not really, I mean, I understand most of my structures are low power and not fit, but because they're low power and not fit, there's not really any counterplay options I've got against them. And it's not really logistically feasible for me to go out and fit every single structure I want to have in Nullsec. So the TLDR is I'm just letting my stuff get reft and I've just got to deal with that. I can't form enough people in a fleet to deal with them in a fleet. And I don't have the structures fit or prepared properly or the logistical uh, people to actually get them prepared to deal with them otherwise. Yeah. So I'm just going to lose everything in null sec if these guys follow up on their timers. If they follow now, up on their timers, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with that. They're you know low power structures that were going to die if any player organization ever attacked them. But the fact that they're getting removed by NPCs is something entirely different. Well, I I, th I see this as a sandstorm or, you know, uh, one of those rainstorms that comes in and wipes out, uh, you know, human infrastructure. Like, this is, to me, it looks like weather. And, you know, you're not supposed to be able to do everything that you do when there's a lightning storm over your head. Like, you have to just hunker down and endure. And, yeah, some things get killed, some livestock gets killed, whatever. You, you suffer some damage, but... The storm will change. It will let up at some point, and then you can go back to repairing the stuff that it came through and wiped out. Yeah, and honestly, I'm fine with that. I like the I like the story they're trying to tell with this. I'm interested to see where it's going to go next from here, but I'm fine being at the butt of the story if that. Right. You're, the, yeah. the problem is that last week might have been a tropical storm, but this week is a full fledged hurricane. This week is a hurricane compared to last like, week. Like when it's over, they're gonna have to go outside, like bleary eyed, and just survey the damage. It's, it yeah. is insane how much how much uh, is being killed out there. But it's it seems like it's mostly ships, right? Like, I don't... well, I mean, like you know, so far we. I mean, it's only mostly ships because they can't destroy a structure yet because of the reinforcement because timers. Of the timers right. Up. But when they've been given the opportunity, they did, which is not something that happened last time yeah well here's something from lilla power who says that's the problem we don't know if it's a sandstorm or if it's something worse <laughs> that's what i said last week i was like wait till next wednesday and then it was like oh it's gonna be over i'm like no it, it could very well become worse yeah if this continues i mean i'm i'm just gonna drop everything in nullsec there's no point for me to be in nullsec anymore i will say that i don't know my my instinct is that whatever is going to happen next is actually going to happen really soon mm -hmm. because my thought is like, let's say the plan was to have a week of attacks just to like get everybody's attention, but then it goes way wrong. And uh, so they have to shut it off on Monday. But if your next event is a response to that crazy attack, then you have to turn that crazy attack back on before you can do the response to it, if that makes sense. So I'm holding out hope that CCP still got like a plan for a transition that was supposed to happen this week that will happen like in the next day or two. Mm -hmm. But I'm grasping for straws at this point. I understand. I think with the uh, with the Sanchez Nation attacking, this is Teddy. Signaling, Sorry, signaling hold on, T Teddy. Before you go on, can you introduce who you are so people know? Uh, I'm Teddy GBYC. I uh. I'm a director in a wormhole core. Thanks. Wormhole Corporation. Go ahead. Uh, I think it's just sig like the attack on the Arataka research. It's probably signaling the like next stage coming now. Do you think it's a clue? Possibly. It might be premature for that because we do have a, like everybody's really interested in that particular structure because it's the research laboratory of Arataka for the, uh, for the semiosis console. And all of the NPC actors know that. So while you're right, this could be you know, like a, a foreshock of the next thing, I, I don't think that that necessarily suggests that a larger Sancher movement is immediate. Now that I've said that, I'm sure like as we speak, it's happening because CCP loves to make me wrong at this point.
Well, uh, we shall see. I think the interesting dynamics. Uh, it's it, it also seems like uh, a lot of reactions have been very quick, and it's there's kind of a hysteria, uh, or or a feeding of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There's a lot of energy, I think, uh, about this because I think anybody can have an opinion about it, so it allows anybody to say something, and become another voice in the room. It's not just uh, for experts to say this is good, this is bad. It's anyone can have an opinion about it. And those are the things that that uh, players feel now they can participate because they know something about EVE Online. At the very least, this is from their perspective. So it's immune to criticism and correction and that sort of stuff. Um, that's All I know is that whatever's at the end of this road, CCP has better have a great idea because like they've gotten everyone's attention. Let's see what you got. Well, let's let's look at that though. Um, I was talking to, um, well, I can't say who, uh, but some people from North and from the East and the South as well. And they're all kind of handling it. Like we haven't really heard a lot of them publicly criticize this um, more than once or twice. There's certainly no campaign about how it's, this is ruining things. They're saying like, yeah, it's annoying. We're dealing. That's what I'm getting from other groups. Are you? I, seems to me that Imperium's pretty frustrated. Legacy's pretty frustrated. Yeah. Uh, Goblins is frustrated with Horde. Uh, Sort is frustrated with uh, Darkness or whatever they're calling themselves up there. Um, NC uh, doesn't, uh, to, by their own admission, don't have a lot of structures that are being affected, but they're not in Nordic favor PL. of this. So, yeah. Nordic, well, but I don't know who is saying it's not a problem that is one of the larger groups in NullSec right now. Well, are those all well, the groups in Nelson? Yeah, they're, well, they're not all the groups, but you're saying you're talking to people, and they say it's not a problem. I don't know yeah. who they are that are saying it's not a problem. Uh, and but isn't isn't test a big part of legacy? Right. Yes. Yes. Okay, but test is Go. having fun with it, right? No, some, no. Some are. Let's be clear. Ron is having fun with it. Okay. Go ask Sapporo. Go ask Sapporo. Go ask Vili. Go ask Dran, and then come Got back it. to me and ask and answer me whether test is having fun. Okay. There's people in Brave that are like, "This is the best lulls, you know, whatever." You could you could parade them out, but that doesn't mean that, you know, it's not a, a burden on us. Well, I appreciate the clarification. Well, okay, so so it's a burden on you guys, the guys that aren't complaining, the guys with less structures. Now, do you see this as something that can make size? I'm going to be back in just a minute. All right, thanks. Do you see this as something that can make size a liability? Like, is this a, a way of making? Um, making owning too much territory a problem if you can't defend it. These guys can defend it, but I, I don't, I don't, but, I don't think, I don't think this is going to continue for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, if this became the new norm that 24 hours a day in NullSec forevermore, you had to do this, uh, you would have people not playing the game. Uh, you would have people not playing the game. You think this will knock people outside the game? Uh, I'm a very invested Eve player. If the rest of my time in Eve meant managing 24 hours a day, unstoppable attacks from NPCs um, that would require 24 hour a day coverage um, against an enemy that we can't beat, fight, tackle, um, why do I want to play that game anymore? And you're a CSM member, so you wouldn't play just to... I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to push you on the edge of hypotheticals here, but it seems like it's a strong statement to say I quit if this doesn't stop. Well, I didn't say that. I, I think that uh, I think this will end. I don't think it's going to be permanent. The idea that it could be permanent uh, in my mind is a is a non-starter, right? It, it would simply. Uh, there's those of us that are very committed that are fighting this stuff very hard. And there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I hear the Steam sale is going on. I think I'll go play something else till this is over. And they're not pinging me about joining these fleets I don't want to do. And I think it's a very, player retention is a real issue. And I, I don't think it's going to continue. The idea that it could continue is mind boggling to me um, forever. If you don't think it's going to continue, though, then why is it such a big problem? If you, if you don't think it's going to continue, this is something to endure. Like that's the reward, enduring it. Well, like enduring is not, suffering is not a reward. So I, I, I think um, 
I'm up for gameplay. If there would be some uh, rationale to it, if there was some lore or some idea of how we were a trick we were supposed to do and everything else in Eve, an incursion comes and it has heavy consequences when an incursion occurs in your space, but you know how to deal with it. And if you put in the work and the time and the effort, like everything else in Eve, you can beat what the event is and, and move on in this. There is no beating it right now. There is nothing you can do besides be reactive. Yeah. Endure it since it's temporary, like a rainstorm or a sandstorm. But let me ask you a different question. If you have, so, so you, you to like what building. End, to, what end, to what end, right? Like if you want to endure something, if you want to, I want to go achieve something. I want to run a marathon. You train and you endure. And then there's an achievement at the end that you're aiming for. In this, there is no goal. There is no outcome well, in which the suffering is, is, is made uh, worthwhile. You're a, you're a builder, right? You build things. Including yes. structures. How many structures? I'm building a lot of things right now. How many structures have you built? That's a huge number. Over 200. Okay. Uh, so one of the things that I hear all the time is that PvP is the engine of the game because it destroys things. And that creates work for miners and it creates work for people to build things. So if this was an added weight to that to create more destruction, and it has created a lot of ship destruction, not a lot of station destruction, but isn't that something that would give you more things to do in the game you and people like you that build things in in the abstract yes and if you're using your analogy of a natural disaster if a natural disaster like a hurricane comes through and then there's time to rebuild you know that the hurricane is over at some point and you know what the hurricane has done and all that in this case we have none of that right now we don't know what's going to happen so it's very difficult to say look forward to the rebuilding process because we don't know when that happens. Is this event going to go for the next three months in which Sancha drifters and Triglavians all rotate through doing this? We don't know right now. I'm not saying we have to have all the answers, but right now the burnout is real and the people who are your most committed players are frustrated. Well, I, I kind of see this as, as the burnout is maybe part of the pressure, right? Because the because you guys certainly, not you, but empires that have a lot of money, have apparatus to build a lot of money, make stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can't really be hurt by losing a few ships here and there. I mean, we hear about like, if you kill some Titans from the Imperium, they'll just be replaced the next day. That's That's the thing. But what if the pressure isn't just monetary pressure? Because you guys have all shown that you can generate money, especially with the perimeter... Keep Star generating the tax haven that CCP is allowed to go on for years. Um, you guys can't be hurt by money. You need you need to be hurt by something else in order to make you guys react to have, I don't know, to shrink so, to, so that, to have some yeah, pressure. I don't, on you. I don't I don't agree I don't disagree with you. But mm -hmm. to what end? Like, what is the end result that this event is hoping to create? Is well, it? to yeah. break up the alliances and coalitions that exist? Is it to create more industrial work? Is it to shrink empires? What is the goal? Because well, if you can tell me what that is, I'll tell yeah. you whether it's working toward that. But right okay. now, everyone's turtling up. Everyone is, is staying focused on defending their space. Conflict is reduced. Player engagement is reduced. And I don't know that that's positive for the game. It, it, okay, so I don't know what the statistics are in player engagement. We're seeing a ton of engagement in the chat right as people go back and forth but i'll tell you this is something that hilmar even pointed to not that long ago and when they looked at uh, what keeps groups together is um shared misery and shared uh, achievement like there's a there's a whole group of things and it's not always just winning your way over and over again sometimes it's enduring bad times and if you can't give each other bad times or i'm not saying you're not capable of fighting each other because you are but the environment creeping up on you and doing things that you don't understand yet seems to be an opportunity for you guys to bond over some misery. Like just looking at it from that side of things. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I, can but... say, I think I can say that Brave has bonded over enough misery over the years that we need no help in, in that department. <laughs> but I mean, I, I hear what you're saying and there's a partial truth to it. I don't think it justifies the way this is playing out right now. Right. If the goal of CCP is to make the bonds between NullSec entities internally be stronger, this is a very obtuse way of making that happen. 
Okay, and the last thing is, let's pull back for some perspective. You have CCP who put out an expansion called Invasion, and they might have done a head fake, right? They put forward a lot of media attention on these, uh, this race, that um, one of three races that is blasting messages towards you and taking over high sec and only high sec. They're only in high sec. And then secretly you get uh, what we can only call like a sucker punch of drifters on null sec that, that weren't affected by invasions at all. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, un it's, it's made people very uncomfortable. Uh, and so now there may be a look, we heard just reports right now, which is why I was excited of Sancha starting up attacks or maybe being signs of what's coming in the few days, whereas the third race gets involved in this invasion. Like this is all part of an expansion and a living world. Can you see how CCP is looking at this? Uh, if that's what they're trying to do and you're saying we're not hearing from them, so we don't know what they're trying to do. Is it, do we always need to hear from them about what they're trying to do? Um, I don't think we always need to hear. I don't think we need full information all the time. But if it's going to be lore, let's have some lore. If it's going to be an event that you can defeat and fight back against, let's have a, a win condition. Right now, there isn't that. Um, I don't think most people in... Uh, uh, Nullsec would have any issue with having the equivalent of the Triglavian invasions in nullsec the issue is these things are directly focused on attacking structures in a way that wasn't occurring in high sec and it's the structure attacks that are creating the kind of frustration you're hearing from me mm -hmm. and from other groups in that we need to defend the infrastructure that makes kind of our way of life possible that is a different and a change from what the triglabian invasions were about I don't think you'd hear any of this if the drifters were simply flying around killing ratters and people in space. It's the fact that they're attacking structures that is a, a huge swing that's a different uh, effect that we haven't really seen before. All right. Um, so now, I have Concord's response, by the way. Oh, let's hear it. As one anonymous source comments to Rhett Gloriax, quote, after all, we're concerned with the safety of decent citizens of civilized worlds. These Cavaliers, warlords, and pirate groups don't respect the law, so I guess they can look after themselves, end quote. <laughs> uh, that's CCP uh, humor, uh, basically saying outlaws can, uh, well, GF. Um, but that's pretty funny. Uh, okay, so... TFU? <laughs> no, well... So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out. I appreciate the time to talk. I hope I haven't Thanks, frustrated Dunk. too many people with my discussion. It's time for me to uh, finish my building, go out for a bike ride, and get away from Eve for a little bit. Yeah, have a great... So, uh, hope everyone has a good... All you Americans, have a great holiday. All you British people, suck it. The rest of the world, <laughs> I love you very much. And hey, uh, have a great week. Have a good fourth. Thanks for stopping by. Dunk Dinkle, CSM member from Brave. Well, I, th I um, was going to say one last thing about it, but I, it, it's just not surprising to me. I just think there's a massive reaction because they're trying to send a message to they being um, parts of NullSec, trying to send a message to CCP that uh, this, isn't, this isn't fun for them. And I'm not sure that that's how EVE works, like if it's not fun. Again, if this was very rewarding, if people were able to kill these guys, uh, these uh, drifters, and get some reward out of it, I think you'd have the opposite reaction. You'd, you'd hear um, people complaining that, hey, why are you feeding these guys more wealth? They already have enough wealth. So uh, you're not going to win either way. I find it somewhat illuminating that a lot of the nullseckers are looking at it from a purely mechanical point of view. Mm -hmm. What is the mechanical reason why is ccb doing this as if the the reason why it's happening is some sort of game function either to break up the blue donut or get rid of uh dis you know uh low powered structures or whatever like everybody wants it not just null seconds everybody wants it. a lot of people are looking at this as like a, a gamey function i don't but a lot of the uh, the people that are like 
anybody who has like game development experience or or narrative experience or has just been paying attention to this for a long time are looking at it as like, well, not what is CCP trying to do with this? What are the drifters doing from wanting to do with this? I think that's <laughs> the bigger clue as to where this is going. Um, because a lot of this is also, there's a reason to believe that a lot of what's the beat by beat of what's happening, like not the feature level, but like the how it's progressing is done by people like Delegate Zero, um, who is the main guys who write the lore, right? So this is all stuff that's been worked out for a long time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it has to get into a bigger story. What's up? I think if they're trying to set up the Drifters as a big bad enemy in Nullsec and, and try to really make us all hate them, they're really setting them up, them up as a good enemy for the Trigger. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really interesting. I, I keep going back to the fact that CCP has literally made uh, one group that's red triangles that test and prove us, and then another group, which is a rogue AI that's come to kill us all. And that's true regardless of whether or not you describe it from an in-game or an out-of-game perspective, which I think is kind of amusing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so okay. So we're in like week two of Drifter Attacks, but we're in like what, week four or five of Invasion Expansion? So it would be week six, right? Because week one was no conduits, week two was minor, week three was major, week four was World Arc, week five was Drifter Part 1, this is Drifter Part 2. And we assume there is a Drifter Part 3 or a Sancia Part 1 coming up next. I uh, I assume very little. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably yeah, I, I would have assumed that if Drifters and Trigs were going to clash, they would have clashed this week in Losec. Now I have no idea. The biggest key, the only the only key that we have really right now is that right before the Drifters attacked, the Triglavians sent us a different message that showed this, what appears to be a structure, um, or it might be a very odd ship, but it looks more like a structure of some kind. Um, and we haven't seen it manifest in the game yet. So um, I still stand by the idea that the Triglavians may in fact give us some sort of technology that will allow us to defend ourselves against some of these superpowers. Mm-hmm. And I've even, I've even mused at the effect that what if this is the way to kill local, right? What if the end result oh, is that drifters take down local and then you now need these towers to see who's around you? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. like... Total speculation, people. Yeah. I mean, like, that's the crazy thing about this is that like all of the paths that this could lead are all like crazy scenarios because they've put in they've rolled the dice so hard that it could almost lead anywhere and that's why i say like i just hope that ccp's follow-up is as impressive as what a lot of these hints seem to be suggest you know they've they've anteed all in they better Mm -hmm. be holding something and not bluffing is is all i'm saying yeah i think if you're if you enjoy the lore in this game you're probably having a field day right now because it's very very interesting i i I'm having a field day because people are at least a little bit paying attention to these kinds of things. And, um, you know, like I wasn't always a, a big lore guy. And I stayed out of it for a long time. The whole reason why I got into the lore is because Viridian wanted to do the Know Your Lore segments of the hydro- Hydrostatic podcast. And so I eventually just happened to be around lore guys enough that I knew what I was talking about or whatever if you want to argue that i do uh (laughs) but um you know i think that um things like lore and things like story are very useful for personal investment Mm -hmm. in a universe and a world right so the idea that like i know something and then that knowledge gets called back somehow in any way then that ends up being a reward for a player like you can reward you're rewarding them for their knowledge yeah it's like, like when you're in class and you're like i know the answer to that i'm gonna raise my right. hand oh dude i i know those guys yeah. right you know like i i get it yeah so um and i made a video about this a long time ago so i think that that like it actually helps players uh engage more with the story with with the game itself if they're engaged with the story so i don't know whether or not this extreme of a situation um is good in the long run or not probably not but it does like that notion that you don't 
that the lore isn't important anymore, that that argument doesn't exist. Uh, so hopefully this means that some people will start looking into these things and realize how crazy things are, mm -hmm. right? Like I talk to people all the time, and it's not just like understanding, well, why are the drifters here with the Triglavians? What's the relationship there? But then when I explain like who exactly the drifters are and the other and all that stuff, they're like, this is incredible. I'm like, yeah, you're right, it is. So I don't know. I yeah. definitely think it's gotten more people to pay attention to the lore lately and more people into the lore lately. I, I don't yeah. think they appreciate it, though. I don't, I don't think they're happy to do it. Um, well, well I, I'm, again, I'm, again there, I'm there, are leadership, there are people that look at this as, as a purely mechanical yeah. system, and they couldn't be bothered with it. Yeah, I don't but, think it's mutually exclusive. I think you can hate the mechanics of this and still think the lore is pretty cool. Right, but what I'm saying is that there are people that are so mechanically focused that when you say, like, no, d d don't you understand? There's, there's a reason for all this. They're like, I don't give a shit. This sucks. You know what I mean? So Yeah. Yeah, that's like, what yeah, I mean. And I, I can't blame them for that, too. Because, I mean, yeah. even dealing with it on a small scale, it's, it, well, it's, not been enjoying, it's not been improving my game. That's what gets me, though. And this is where I, I have my own personal feelings at stake, which I'm trying to keep out. I'm, I've, I've tried very hard to keep out of making jumping on one side or the other. I just play I just play as much of the devil's advocate as possible to sh to to sh to stir up the conversation to get it going. And this one doesn't need a lot of stirring up, but my own personal feelings are there's a elitism not just about your style of PVP, but there's an elitism about your gameplay in general. And I think one of my biggest complaints about CSM is there's a general pattern of elitism in CSM about what's important in EVE, that being player versus player and epic gameplay, uh, than, than other facets of the game, like allure, like exploration, uh, like manufacturing, like um, harvesting. And I'm not talking about mining and oracles. I'm talking about harvesting PI or harvesting moons and that sort of stuff. Like There's a, a lot of different ecosystems in the game, but there seems to be among a lot of players that are very vocal, especially in the players that we're exposed to because they've gravitated towards the media to talk about this game that they like so much, that there is an elitism about this game really only matters if players are fighting each other. And that's Hello. my little rant. Amar, a good time for you to jump in, buddy. Uh, how you doing, Amar? Well, it turns out that I managed to fall asleep on the sofa. So... Um, <laughs> You've been taking, having late nights, huh? Yeah, um, I tend to be awake during the night lately, and now I'm trying to switch it back to be a more normal yeah. human being. And so, that's so you've been observing. Well, you've been observing this pretty closely. You're around. You're listening to the arguments back and forth. What do you yeah. What are you seeing? Um. Well, I'm. I'm I'm kind of like you, Metro, I think, trying to be a devil's advocate, but more so trying to understand um, all of the perspectives out there. I'm, not, I'm no expert whatsoever, but I've been listening to a lot of uh, Norsec players, Goons, and I've been speaking to Heisek players and, and Wormall players. Um, I, think my, I think this might go for quite a few people. So... To begin with, we, we do have to recognize that ma the actual ma majority of players in EVE don't actually play in, in Norsec. Um, I've found that Norsec players tend to believe that the, the mass majority and the important group of players are, are in Norsec. That's not necessarily the case. And those players who are not in Norsec obviously won't understand the impact and the gameplay that the drifters actually um, are bringing to the table. So I think the initial reaction of a lot of people were just simply that they were happy to see something going on in the game that were to stir up Norsec and kind of impose it. Did we get did we lose you there? You seem to get cut off. I'm gonna say yes since he didn't answer. We'll wait till he gives us back. There Robotically he is. cut off at that. Yeah. Drifters. Jamming, Amar. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm affected as well. That's Str horrible. Struggle through. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So no, but 
um, there's a lot of people who have an outside perspective. They don't understand what's going on in Norsec. And I think that the in initial reaction was just that they were happy to see something going down. It kind of stirred things up. So we wouldn't have that stagnant, um, what a lot of people perceive to be a stagnant Norsec, where they have been favored for a long time um, in Norsec in terms of both uh, balance changes, um, like making ISK, um, all those kinds of aspects. I think Suetonia in his Reddit posts managed to summarize that very well, why there was that kind of knee-jerk reaction from, from all other corners of space. But um, gradually, as we, we come to understand what's going on in Norsec, I think more and more people are actually kind of agreeing that this is really bad gameplay and, and there's very little to benefit from it. Um, sure, we want to see maybe something radical to happen, like the way Hilma said it on, um, in EVE Down Under, but if the end result is actually that people would rather prefer to just log off as opposed to play the game and play the game mechanics, um, but in my opinion, that's always going to be a bad iteration of, of uh, a game designing element. And that's what it looks to be in terms of drifters. Like my primary concern in this game is actually to keep people engaged, to keep people playing, um, make sure that we get more people into the game. And I think the, the closest resemblance I have to what I perceive the drifters to be now is the previous war deck mechanics we had in HiSec, where basically you had such a loop sided, is it called lopsided? Yeah, um, lopsided. Mm -hmm. kind of, lopsided kind of future where. The ones that are being um, exposed to it will have to deal with it. The where, where like the best alternative is basically just to log off because there's there's no reasonable way to really oppose it in any form that is entertaining or challenging or or rewarding. So you used to have high sec corporations basically just logging off because they couldn't oppose pirate or marmite. Um, in any reasonable shape or form. And I think that's what we will be seeing in also going forward if this continues. Like hundreds of systems being attacked for more than 12 hours straight. You, as a new player in Olsic, you were to maybe log on, try to do some ratting. All of a sudden you have these NPCs showing up out of nowhere. You get insta blapped within seconds sometimes. And you have no idea why or what's going on. And what? that's just going to piss people off and make them log off. And I think that's bad. Should yeah. I continue, or do you want to <laughs> chime in? Sorry, um, I was, I was uh, fixing a. Uh, what you're looking at here is a graph provided by Victor Fell. Uh, active characters by Solar System Security class, and you can see that at the very top there is a green. Uh, that's far, far and away higher percentage-wise than the red, which would be low, null sec, the orange, which would be low sec, and blue, which would be wormhole space. Those, those populations appear to be generally the same, but they are nothing in comparison to high sec, which is the green. Now, again, this is a game that not it's not one player per character. You can have multi-characters, and you can play in different places and multi-places, with different characters. So it's not an exact idea, but that is a huge difference in populations. There's a giant population in high sec and as big as null sec feels, as big as uh, low sec feels, it's, um, it's, a, it's dwarfed in comparison. Okay, so that's, what, that's the graph that you're looking at. But like, I could also add that, um... It looks like, if I understand it correctly, I, I haven't been able to catch up now, but it seems like they are refing structures in high now as well. Is that that's, the latest that, news? That's news to me. Where are you hearing No. Me? There was a there was an event in um, which Arataka Research Consortium's structures were reinforced by Sancha's in, uh, rats. Diff different group. So, so that, that you can look at that as like a foreshadowing of things yeah. to come setting up kind of thing I understand. Yeah. yeah but let's say let's say we had a very, like the exact same uh iteration of, of game design or gameplay being introduced into high sec or low sec at the moment uh i i believe that you would see the same kind of reactions coming out of those areas as well where, where people would just log off 
and and just rather not engage in this gameplay because well, it but, seems to be that kind of broken. Okay, so you so you log in, you seem jammed up. Your guys don't want to go out and fight or do something like that. And we know that Nullsec players have other characters in different places. Can they do something mm-hmm. in high sec in the meantime? Can they do something in wormholes in the meantime? Or... Yeah, they could, but I mean, it's, it goes back to the same argument. You know, like we, we've been talking about, once again, the, the, the Vortex in high sec. Like you could say the same thing. Like, of course, maybe a high sec character, a new player in high sec, doesn't necessarily have a wormhole character or a Nullsec character. Mm-hmm. But I also think that's a that's a quite bad thing to base expected gameplay on. Like you you're supposed to have more than one character in different areas of space in order to enjoy the game and be able to engage and, and be active. So I mean sure you could you can make that argument, but I don't mm-hmm. think that's very viable actually. I don't know. So I sense? personally don't do multiple accounts, but I, I do have a high set character and an all set character. <laughs> so I can kind of see both sides of it here. I think that uh, Nullsec historically are, it, you can kind of compare it to Twitter. There's billions of human beings living on the planet their whole lives. They just kind of hunker down and do their thing. And that's cool. And then you've got the loud, angry voices out there. And that's frankly Nullsec. If, if I'm being completely unbiased here, that is Nullsec. Nullsec is the headline grabbers and all that stuff. But you know, you can't really dispute the graph. High sec is the majority of the player base. I think it always will be. Yeah, as Lex said, vocal minority. And wow, are we vocal sometimes, in all fairness. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be uh, uh, outsized at the moment. Let me let in somebody who's also been in um, crew uh, sorry inside of the public chat all week and again he's a original tis member uh caleb uh and caleb and ashtarathi actually were the ones going back and forth for a lot of people chiming in and giving information so welcome caleb thanks guys uh i just actually wanted to ask ashtarathi something because this ties into something he was talking about on stream yesterday and i found it really interesting uh the whole having alternate uh, characters and multiple accounts. Uh, and you were talking about the taxonomy and the classification of uh, the player base. And I don't know about you, but uh, I'm not necessarily a dedicated one style player, right? And if I play any other MMO, like if I'm playing uh, World of Warcraft, I do not only stick to one class, I will have alts and I will be ready to do tanking or uh, healing if necessary, right? And, and, and in EVE, I don't always feel like sitting around doing market stuff, right? Well, it, it's cozy because it makes it possible to do all the meta. But what I'm hinting at is the multiple account is pretty much what you get to when you have been here for a year, two or three or more. Of course, there's still single, dedicated, one class only players, but I don't think they're the majority. I, I agree with you. Humans are complex. And so they'll be doing different things at different times with different motivations. Um, I want to clarify that Bartle's taxonomy isn't necessarily about any one task. It's about more about motivation. Yeah, right? I, know that. Killer... I just think that they're related in Eve because Eve is so meta, right? Sure. But I would say that there's like there's a lot of achievers and achiever-like stuff in Eve. There's plenty of numbers going up. There are plenty of people comparing their numbers. Um, and that manifests itself in many different ways. And then there's also a lot of killers in Eve. There, there's a lot of people that like to know that their beating of the other person has caused distress to those people or has disrupted Sadistic. what they want to do. Sadistic tendencies. Or go so far as to say sadistic tendencies. Yeah, there, it's, the, it's the desire to impact other, other people. In a negative way. Um, usually in a negative way, yeah. yeah <laughs> and, and it's an adre- adrenaline felt win, right? And, and we all like to win. The, the, the yeah. things that we're yeah, good yeah. at when we when we when we do that on on behalf of uh, other players of course there's an evil or nasty element but we all agree it's consensual right uh, th- this this NPE thing is not real uh, sorry NPC thing is not consensual but but usually gameplay is consensual and and when you log into Eve you know what you can expect and pretty much everyone agrees that that's okay I don't agree that that's okay 
I think that's part of the problem is that when you log in, you know what to expect. Well, to, to be People fair, have shifted the goalposts on what to expect over the years. It's not like it's been this static thing. As I've yeah. said several times in text and voice, the expectations of EVE have changed year after year after year. A 2000, a current player new to the game would completely lose their mind on the kind of stuff that happened from 2003 to 2005 for example and vice versa well, what, to be honest what, what i'm thinking is that um i think it, pretty much every single pve element in eve is opt-in apart from drift or wormholes i guess maybe because the you can go into one of those and you can get completely hammered but you can just compare this the way they introduced drifters into norse the way they did it with the triglavians in high set so i think the majority of people believe that the way they did Triglavians in Highsec, the invasions, is absolutely amazing. Like the lore build-up, the way they, the, the mystery of how they sneaked in the videos, and we had the, the uh, is it called the Ark or whatever it's called, the, the big ship that turned up in that room in Abyssal Dead Space. I mean, you also have a thing yeah, like... The if you're doing, construction site. Yeah, I mean, that, that introduction was amazing, in my opinion. Um, but... The, the drifters they ca came out of the blue like there's no, there's, there was no real context apart from that we have the invasions going on and, and they have relations with the Trevavians going back in history and all that kind of stuff but also from a gameplay perspective like if you're going to when you're about to go into a Trevavian invasion zone you know that that's what's about to happen like you have it in um, the activity tracker uh, with Trevavian systems you also get a warning before you jump through the gate the same way you get a warning before you go into into a wormhole space, for example. Um, you also get, like, uh, um, compared to incursions, it is very clear that you've now entered an incursion system. This is dangerous. If you don't want to participate in this stuff and you don't want to take that risk, mm -hmm. you can actually opt out of doing it. And you, you don't get an option in, in Norsec at the moment. You well, just get drift to spawn you. They used to say, uh, and, and Dirk McGurk says it very well here, undocking, uh, you consent to PVE, when you undock and that's uh that's flipping funny. flipping on its head what they used to say is hey you consent to pvp when you undock and i yeah, remember that i've been, I I've been saying that. Using that on people quite a bit back in the day yeah so my devil's advocate for that is do we really want nullsec to be as safe and secure and predictable and and the signpost is clear than this high sec like no High sec gets warnings because they're because they're high seckers. Null seckers don't get warnings because you're hardcore, right? No, but I, I don't think that's okay. Yeah, I understand what you're saying now, and I I agree that null sec should not be as safe as high sec or low sec. It should be dangerous. That's why you have high rewards in in null sec. That was the basis, wasn't it, for for CCP Siegel? She had that kind of agenda where if you do dangerous stuff, you're gonna get better rewards from doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people believe that null has become way too safe like it's the safest place in eve but, because you have the super umbrellas and it's difficult to get in there and whatever let me bring in uh because we're going to wrap up soon but uh, Vili from uh test he's their leader uh military leader and also a csm member so if his mic is on well, he'll be joining just us. listening to uh, what you're talking about now i would argue that you, your base assumption is incorrect so it questions the validity of the rest you make the claim that Nullsec is the safest place to be in Eve, and yet ignore the fact that more is lost in Nullsec than any other place. Well, no, I, I, that's not really evidence of being. Well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the, the, uh, what I'm trying to get at is the perception of Nullsec being the safest place in Eve. Not well, perception versus place. reality. Like the exactly. reality is obviously it's not the safest place. Well, that's not it's evidence the though. Most really. dangerous place. That's not it evidence. absolutely is evidence. You no, can look at any kill board and 90% of the losses are from Nullsec. There are a lot of fights that are very safe to take. Wouldn't you agree with that? And a lot of things get destroyed. What does that even mean? Well, it means that you take a fight, well, you know you're uh, okay. going to win, and you kill a bunch of things. Of, like, there are well, zones no, of Nullsec no. that are safer than high school. Not there all are. of Nullsec, but there are definitely zones of Nullsec. And those are the zones that are taking the safer most in amount of way? damage. Safer in the fact that you can, you could walk away from your computer with two billion undocked and probably be okay. The you know you don't have like if you're in the heart of a 
empire ratting, your chances of having huge problems is not that big of uh, not that. I I actually let me let me actually say <laughs> I'm not leaning into the actual argument of which side is safer than the other. I'm just saying that that there are regions of nullsec that are pretty darn safe, um, especially from player actions. And there is a way you could argue that this kind of threat is the only kind of threat that could threaten some of these more protected real empires. Well, I, I mean, I'm sure you guys have probably already talked about Dran's post, but it, it's very clear, obviously, that... Oh, actually, we haven't, um, but, but go ahead. Yeah. It's not the big guys that are going to suffer from this. It's the little guys. The, the, all of this creates is a... Uh, a further push to take the little guy and push him into a big block because it's only the big blocks who are organized enough to properly handle this level of situation. Yeah, and I, as, as a little guy, I agree with what Vilya is saying. I mean, it's going to push my group out of Nilsec completely if this continues. Yeah. But hold on a second. I, I, hold on, let me, let me challenge that just a little bit. You have Exxon. also completely no oh. fittings on these structures. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, <laughs> they're also and high, you're the only so guy I'm... defending them. Like, you are the little guy, but you're kind of too little. In some respects, wouldn't you say? But should, but yeah, should I, would, there I agree. Be a class that is quote unquote too little, like, isn't that exactly the thing that CCP wants more than anything? Is the little guys being able to step forward and take a well, wait, no, 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 hold on. Let me, let me flip this on you. If you invaded him and started smashing his stuff and then he started whining because he's only one guy and his structures are low powered and they're not defended, would you be like, well, you're right, you should definitely be able to have your, no, you're gonna be like, no, if you can't defend your stuff, you lose it. And that's exactly what's happening. It's just but that players awesome. haven't been able to put constant pressure on other players in the same sort of way. Oh, well, maybe that's the question. Is the, the, should Well, the, but that's the other thing Like you yeah. have to understand is that no player could ever do what the Drifters have done. I agree. Like, it, it would literally be impossible for, like, I don't know if you guys know what was happening in the Fraternity War before this all started, but, like, mm -hmm. I was coordinating 30-plus attacks a day at one point. Like, and that is like far above any level of coordination that Eve has ever seen. And, you know, we're now looking at attacks in the several hundreds per day, right? Like, like the context level is so insanely different that it's, uh, and on top of that, all of my co you know, coordination and attacks required people and planning and time and members and like money and losses and everything else. Well, the drifters require none of those things. They don't even drink water. <laughs> and you can't negotiate you with voice them. boxes. And you can't spy on them either to know what they're going to do. That actually bothers me. That well, you, uh, I mean, you can make jokes about spying, but you know, no more than fraternity could when, if you properly, um, if you properly separate and utilize, you know, um, need to know and you know, decentralize the information enough, spying becomes very difficult as well. I mean, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's hard to argue uh, actually to argue against the fact that the way that the drifters have been implemented is quite oppressive. Not just quite, like when you, if you look at the extent of the attacks and and the way they are doing it, it's mm -hmm. completely overwhelming for any type of entity. So if if like my realization uh, last night when we were talking about it again uh, was that if I was an old sec player myself uh, in old sec line member or something of the sort. And I wasn't part of the defensive fleet that had to deal with this. Like, there's there's no way I would actually undock and go in space. Even as a as a as a kind of like small gang roamer sometimes, there's no way I'm going into Norsec now. I mean, I would love to go into uh, Jell now and try to shoot some goons or go into uh, Pandemic Horde tier tier to, to, to get some good fights. But there's no way I'm going to do that because the risk of just dying on a gate now to Drifters is just way too big. It's, it's, well, it's, it's shut down all you know PVE. Um, activities aside from Oracle Mining and Super Editing because they're the only uh, ships that don't get instantly volleyed by fucking drifters. Yeah, and I see what you mean. They're, when when two groups go to war, they're picking targets. There's a st strategy to it. You're seeing this as a, as a complete flat attacks everywhere menace, right? Well, it's like a hurricane. You, like the, you just batten down the hatches and try to hold on. But if the hurricane continues for uh, a time frame, you know, in excess, people will just choose to stop logging into a hurricane.
right? Like, n you know, right now, like, all the alliances in EVE are, like, they're, they're holding the doors, keeping the hurricane out. But sooner or later, you know, the strength in the arms goes out and the doors open. And at that point, people just start giving up. And as soon as people start giving up, people stop logging in and people start quitting. Like, it's a very simple... People don't come out after a hurricane and clean up and rebuild? Not if they know that there could be another hurricane tomorrow with the same ferocity. Like, just in Florida. Like, or... Yeah, it's Florida, I think. You know, if it's a very quick, short hurricane and they can handle it, sure, they'll, they'll go out and rebuild. But most people fucking move. If, if the hurricane is so bad that it tears down everything they could and they have no way to stop it, no way to predict it. You sound like somebody who's never been to Florida. <laughs> I have. Well, but the allegory is, is valid, right? Once yeah. you have had a hurricane, it's very much not likely to happen again for at least a while. So you have a chance to actually recuperate. You don't have that here. I, I, anyone? I, would, I would go about it a different oh, way, which is that people voice. voluntarily play EVE. They don't voluntarily live and, and go to their, you know, have their house and all that other stuff. Like, they're not, right. so, you so rebuild it's, that for so it's hurricane because that's your stuff. And in yeah, EVE, exactly. it's like, I'm going to go find another game. Well, exactly. So you're, you're further making my point, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we, we know that, like, from, from the World X, we know that if people log off in, in that kind of situation, there's a lot of people who actually don't log on again. And that's, that could be a real problem. That could be a real problem. I don't want to see it happening. Which is why this feature pretty much seems like a forced uh, rage break. Well, I, I, listen, if, if they want to kill their game, they're on course. Like, <laughs> exactly. But I, I think that you can, you can still do stuff to fix it. Like, um, oh, okay, yeah. well, the concept itself, like having some kind of threat, the way we have a threat in, in high sec now with, with the Triglavians, I think a lot of people will actually enjoy that. I think that could be could be a cool new. Um, well, the Triglavians and the addition. Drifters, the Triglavians and the Drifters are in. There's no comparison, right? Like, yeah, they're black entirely and white. different things. They are they are completely uh, opposites of, of of trying to implement the gameplay aspect into the game. And like I think long, the way they've just done the Drifters exist. PVE and EVE will be shut down for the most part in most of the no blocks because you can't be in a situation where if I warp to the belt in my Rattlesnake or non-super capital ship and I can be instantly killed, then I'm going to keep doing that, right? Because it takes, what, uh, 50 hours to rat up a carrier or something like that? So if the odds are greater that uh, I will be randomly killed between, you know, so let's say you want to double your risk at, at, at best, right? Or at minimum, I should say. So that means I have to be able to rat safely for 100 hours before I'm willing to take a carrier in, into the belts, right? So th that's the formula you need to be basically working with. But let's, let's say if they were to implement the drifters in a way that's similar to, to the tricks in HiSec or even like the forward operating bases that we can see with the diamond rats and that kind of stuff, all of a sudden you have a completely different type of gameplay element going into it. And that would probably be something that people would enjoy and think this is fun because then you can actually you can game it you can actually um, kind of like achieve an objective you can get rid of it you can avoid it if you don't want to face it while it still poses as a, as a potential threat in Nolsec. but that's not the way it's been 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 put into the game. Well, the overall concept might have some validity, but the point is that this has already been broken by by the Nolsec entities, right? They figured out how to counter it, and it's not even fun. It's actually less fun than any other content in the game. Um, the the, the entities that are too talking. small will not have the same option, right? They don't have the manpower to actually go out and defend their thing. I mean, I've been hearing reports of different ways of attacking the, uh, or defending yourself against the drift, but well, uh, especially in the newer vo version. Yeah, the, the old version versus the new version is very different. The, the new yeah. version is manageable for reasonable fleets, but the fact you have to send a reasonable fleet to do anything is significant. Right. If I may uh, say something that's slightly tangential to this, which is that, um, so I keep hearing this, there's, there's a comment about this in chat, whatever, about how 
like I give CCP too much credit because they don't follow up on their stuff and their lore sucks and they haven't done anything since Caroline Star and they just let all their stuff lay fallow. Um, just because you haven't known about what is going on doesn't mean it hasn't been going on. There has been things happening at a fairly regular pace since Caroline Star. And we can trace everything that's happening right now all the way back to that event and before. Um, so I'm just, I'm assuring you guys that CCP has done actually a pretty bang up job of managing the story for the last three or four years. They did have a pretty significant setback with the Drifter AI in the early days. And so a lot of the, uh, that storyline had to kind of pause and, and go into the back burner when it was ramping up real quickly. But other than that, like there has been, there has been a lot of stuff going on. So the idea that there isn't is totally a misnomer. Um, also, as far as following up and whatnot, I believe I agree that that's been true in the past. However, with basically all of the features that they've released since and including Abyss, they have done uh, a pretty incredible job of following up with bug fixes, tweaks, changes. In invasion has changed changed several times a week for the first like couple of weeks as they were tweaking things and dialing it in di directly. Like these features, they care a lot about. And so the idea that they would just like leave the Drifter invasions in its current state and move on because CCP abandons things, I think is um, not a great theory. I think that the more chance would be that they would pull it and then be like, I guess we got to go try something else. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to speak to those two points. I understand everybody's frustration and I understand that, that if CCP doesn't follow through with this in a meaningful way, it's probably going to be very bad for them. Um, and I think it probably should be, uh, if, if that's true, but I, I, yeah, I just wanted to clarify those two. Does, does every form of gameplay need to have a counter is what I'm hearing here from chat. For instance, burn yes. is there, is there a counter to burn Gita? Yes. What would that be by the yeah, way? You, you don't go to Gita. Well, you don't go to Gita or you form your own and coalition this, and go you, punch you goons in the face. Undock, and for or, this, you, you don't undock your hell to start you ratting. shift the market you know. hub. Or you know when it's coming up because you have intelligence networks and you stock up well before it. Or you don't drop an Athenor when you know that there's a drifter invasion. I'm just God, it's so <laughs> that makes no sense. The conflation of PvP and PvE. That's no, the one thing that no, I'm gonna ding you on. It is, is you, both of it is hold on. It is whether or not you're willing to do something super risky when you know that that super risky action will probably be punished. Whether or not that punishment comes from a player or a, or a, an NPC condition doesn't matter to the fact that it's stupid to do something super risky when you know everything's dying. Okay, so I'm confused. You're talking about dropping Athenors in general or just dropping an Athenor today? Oh, I'm talking about the Athenor that died uh, yesterday that was being dropped in the middle of the Drifter invasion. I was just saying, I, I made that yeah. was silly. And to be but, fair, I, I think if there was some sort of organization to actually fight back a bit on the burn Gita things, I think it would make it a little bit less viable and pr or problematic to be as effective as, as it usually is. All right. Well, we're going to have to wrap it up, uh, Vili. Sorry you came late. We're at two hours and ten minutes into this show. It's uh, uh, time to go, but I wanted to say if there's like uh, anything that you guys want to say about a summary of events I, I i'm glad we got all points of view from wormholes from null sec and high sec um can you guys summarize your position real quick so we can just kind of leave with an idea of where people are coming from and what they think let's start with Vili null sec's point of view on this sort of thing as far as you're concerned um it sucks like I don't know what you wanted to say. Like, oh, you said it. It's you don't like it. Sucks. It's succinct. Yeah. Uh, and um, I think I don't know. I'd, I'd encourage people to read Dran's post. I thought it was really good. Uh, I wasn't expecting it today, but it, it's a nice little summary of just how much fun it is to handle these. Dran is the uh, diplomat for Test Alliance. 
Uh, did you guys read, uh, Vili, did you read Suetonia's post by any chance uh, a few days yeah. ago? What'd you think of that? Pretty worthless. Hmm. All right. And now I want to go to Exxon Fang, who's the little guy in Nullsec trying to, trying to live there. Your perspective. So we placed a lot of structures down, uh, fully knowing full well that if anyone was going to attack them, that they could probably kill them. But there was not really much consequence to dropping them, just wherever you could, could get them anchored successfully. Uh, so we're basically losing everything. I think for a small group like me, there's not much counterplay because their citadels probably wouldn't be fit to be anti-subcap anyways. Uh, so it's kind of a wait and see and see if they actually follow up on the timers right now. But overall, I'm not too happy with it. All right. And uh, not that wormhole space is affected by this, but I want to hear from Teddy uh, your point of view on this, if any. Um, as soon as you undock from the station or a citadel, you should consider your ship dead, in my opinion. Um, and if you can't make peace of that, then you probably shouldn't undock. All right. Does that extend to structures being anchored? And And Ashtarathi, well, uh, Ashtarathi, your last point of view on this, uh, what do you think is going, what, what do you think about this whole thing? I, I find it amazing. I think that um, what is happening to Null is extreme, and I feel for them greatly. Um, but overall, I am excited to see how this is going to play out. Um, I personally believe that CCP has something up their sleeve because they're getting our attention. Um, and beyond that, I'm, I am excited to see these NullSec uh, reactions to uh, invasion or to their invasions because I think that there's been a lot of arguments about NullSec versus HiSec in the last few days. And I think it'd be very interesting to see that test out instead of just be argued. Uh, we'll do, uh, Amar, your last thoughts on, on where we are and what you think of the, uh, what you think of the last few days. Um, I was honestly hoping for more when we had the updates yesterday. I think, um, CCP probably missed the mark in terms of, uh, making it more balanced and making it actually worthwhile doing. So people would choose to log in and engage and actually have like, I know there's some people who are saying that they are having fun doing it. Ron, for example. But he's an amazing guy in general, also. Super optimistic. Um, yeah, he is. Like, there's, there's no bad days with Ron. But, um, no, I, I was hoping for more than, like, something that is not completely overwhelming, that isn't what I perceive as as broken. But I believe the concept is 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 probably quite good, and it's it's it would be fun to see something like this being added to the game, but I don't think this is the way to do it. Uh, and lastly, Caleb, your, your thoughts on this? I'm just very worried about a feature that pretty much cock blocks all your big time and old time players. When, when players come back and are actually planning to play EVO this summer and they log in and the first thing that happens is that they get flapped by some unseen force. And they then lock off and say, okay, fine, I'm going to go play PUBG instead. That's really bad for CCP. This is a massive failure. Well, I think the perhaps most dangerous point is actually it's the new players that affects the most, since the only ones who are actually able to do any PvE right now are the old-time players with supers and oracles. And the newer players cannot do anything PvE-related without getting or having the threat of being insta -cated. All right, we're going to leave it there. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Stay tuned for Ashtarothi, who's going to take you through some incredible gameplay he did yesterday. And if you want to hang out in public voice today with some friends and talk about EVE Online, please do. Talking in Stations Discord. You can find it at talkinginstations.com. Come into the public channel and hang out. Thanks, everyone. Take care.